The Soray Saturn 35mm showed up in the market late last year, and it was originally made only for Sony and Canon cameras, plus the DJI 4D. Why? So I ended up not playing with it. But now Suray came around and released it for the L and X mount cameras, and we get to play with it. Mounting into the Panasonic S5 II using a cage provided by Suray for this episode. The selling point on this lens is how small and light it is, even though it's a pretty wide full frame anamorphic. The body is made of carbon fiber, so the lens weighs 400 grams, just shy of a pound. It is a pretty measurable difference to the alternative Suray Venus 35mm, weighing double that amount. So this is a 35mm T2.9 full frame lens with 1.6 times squeeze. To our benefit, even though this is a synchro focus design, 35mm is wide enough that the anamorphic movement is small, making it so the squeeze is constant through the focus range and matches a 22mm spherical horizontally. Min's is uh, alright at 90cm or 3 feet, which feels pretty far for a 35mm lens. We have geared rings for focus and iris, and the throw is 120 degrees on the focus ring. We have focus marks in both metric and imperial scales, so no one gets lost. The iris can be stopped down to T16, I wonder why you would do that. And the 10 aperture blades help in keeping the little out of focus ovals consistent. The lens's small form factor leads us to 58mm front thread for filters. What I'm most excited about this lens is throwing it up on a gimbal, such as the RS3 Pro that I have here. Anamorphics are historically and notoriously heavy, so having a decent full frame option that weighs less than a spherical prime is something that picks my attention. Another good path opened by this lens's weight is throwing it up on a drone for aerial anamorphic goodness. Josh, yo, I'm looking at you. This has the same optics as the Venus, which I already reviewed, so let's quickly go through the Saturn's performance. Welp, this lens is sharp. Wide open, I see very little drop in performance across the frame, and that only gets crisper as you stop it down. I honestly would avoid stopping down unless you absolutely need to, as slower stops create an overly sharp look. When it comes to flares, Suri finally started to give us coating options. I was able to choose between blue and neutral flares for this 35mm, and let's agree we're all sick and tired of blue flares, so I picked neutral. That means my flares will take on the color of the light source. A very welcome change. Just like the Venus version, we have a fair amount of pincushion distortion, and honestly, I'm okay with it. Here's the process of reversing this distortion from pincushion to barrel using Resolve. The Saturn 35mm sells at $12.99, available through multiple retailers as well as Suray's website. You can find it on L, X, E, R, F, and DL mounts. It's not exactly cheap, but it's at a competitive price compared to the other full-frame anamorphic mirrorless alternatives in the market right now. I had way more fun than I thought using this on a gimbal. I've been navigating the tricky waters of making my camera movements more fluid recently, and there's always a big contrast between tripod and handheld. So now I can actually bridge that gap without wasting hours trying to optimize a rig for the gimbal even one with a limited payload. The rangefinder helps me with autofocus at close distances, where I feel this lens excels. My main criticism is the slow aperture, which, combined with the extreme sharpness and wide focal length, leads to too much depth of field as soon as your subject takes a few steps away from minimum focus. This combination creates a video-like look that needs countering, either on set with filtration or in post by adding some diffusion in color correction. The Saturn 35mm initially looked like a standalone lens, meaning you could be stuck with a lens that doesn't match anything else, but recently Suray confirmed adding two more focal lengths to the Saturn lineup with a 60mm and a 90mm, which is excellent news for the purposes of gimbal and drone anamorphics, giving you more flexibility when it comes to framing. I eagerly await those lenses to see how they add up together. What are your thoughts about the Saturn 35mm? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Chit the Fahadings, out.